Sony PlayStation VR. You know what? Sony did it. The PSVR is actually pretty great. It looks like 2016 is living up to its billing as the year of virtual reality, with products at the high end, HTC Vive and Oculus Rift, and in the mobile arena, Samsung Gear VR, Google Cardboard, Google Daydream, offering VR options across the spectrum. Now a new contender appears, with an established brand and a gigantic install base. The PlayStation VR, available October 13 represents the most accessible path to VR if only because every one of the roughly 45 million PlayStation 4 owners already has half the required hardware. It's also the only full VR system, that is, one with spatial and motion tracking, that'll get you up and running from scratch for under $700, 630 pounds or 1050 Australian dollars. By itself. If you already have a PS4, it's $399, 349 pounds or 550 Australian dollars. The combined cost, PC plus headset, for Oculus and Vive currently sits north of $1,200. To be sure, this is an expensive toy and certainly not for everyone. In fact, Sony says it's not designed for kids 12 years and under. But considering its price and the fact that you may already have half the hardware sitting in your living room, the PSVR presents a very compelling proposition. Combine that with PlayStation's well-established distribution platform, close relationship to the developers crafting these VR experiences and quality control, and the PSVR is a more worry-free answer to the potentially confusing world of PC-based VR. Setting up either of the two existing PC-connected VR rigs isn't pretty. The same goes with the PSVR. It's not an overly complicated process, but the interconnected wired web that results isn't necessarily something you can tuck away out of sight. You'll need an extra outlet to power the PSVR's processor unit and you'll also need to devote one of the PS4's two USB slots so that it can talk to the console. The unit is about the size of three CD jewel cases stacked on top of each other, this of course needs a place to live as well. The whole thing took me about 10 minutes to connect my first time. When it's all done and dusted, what you're left with feels inelegant and messy, but part of VR is being tethered to a long wire. That's just where the tech is right now. Compared to the Rift and V, the PSVR is no better or worse in that department. Buying the standard $399 PSVR kit assumes you already own a PlayStation camera and two Move controllers. You absolutely need the camera to use the PSVR and two Move controllers are all but required. If you don't possess these items you'll need to purchase them separately. But don't do that. For $499, Sony sells a bundle that includes everything you need, save for a PS4, and packs in the mini-game collection VR Worlds as a bonus. It's a good deal if you're missing some of the prerequisites. With everything connected and the headset on, I was surprised that booting up the PS4 didn't force me to start any kind of in-depth setup. A few quick adjustments and I was mostly ready to go. When you press the headset's inline power button, the console switches into VR mode which shifts the menu screen to the headset and mirrors a lower res version of what you're seeing onto the TV. Intuitive icons explain that you can recenter the home screen if you need to at any time, which is probably something I do at least twice a session. Instead of a general initial setup, most software will activate a number of calibration check marks so that you get the best optimal performance for that specific experience. Long story short, at the very least you'll probably be doing some kind of minimal adjustment to your VR play area each time you play. The more I played, the more I learned which games needed more finessing than others. In the manual, Sony says you need approximately a 10 by 6 foot area, about 3 by 2 meters, needed for play, but I was able to get it working fine in a space only about 7 by 4 foot, about 2 by 1.5 meters. The PSVR seems relaxed about how much space you need, and even a few square feet of floor space could end up working for a handful of games. Included with our review kit was a power of $50 stand, think mannequin head, to hold and organize all of the PSVR accessories. 
it's actually something worth checking out because there's not a really good place to store all of these items when you're not using them. The stand also charges two move controllers and the DualShock 4 PlayStation controller simultaneously. It has a spot to hang the headset too, but it tends to droop down too much.